And I've got a feeling we're going to have a little bit of fun here tonight. At 77 years old, Sir Paul McCartney is still rocking and rolling. As part of the Beatles and Wings, and as a solo act, McCartney's been performing to sold-out crowds for nearly six decades. Over the course of his career, he's written around a thousand songs. But now, he's tackling another kind of writing. When I think children's authors, I, I wouldn't have thought Paul McCartney. No, I mean, it was that one of my grandchildren one day said, Hey, grand dude. I thought, that's kind of cool, you know. It got me thinking. Uh -huh. So I, I wrote down some little stories. Hey, grand dude is about a granddad mm -hmm. whose grandkids call him grand dude. And he calls them chillers. So they have adventures. As my kids and the grandkids were growing up, I always loved reading to them mm -hmm. at bedtime. I just love being part of that experience. So it would be nice to have a book. Do your grandkids, when they were younger, did they have an idea that Grand Dude was this world famous musician? No, no they didn't. You know, and I say, people come to see me, people pay to come and see me, I'm famous. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, watching TV, they gradually get the fame thing. They get things like people always wanting a photo of me. But they're very, they're very cool with it. McCartney is no stranger to fame. Just 21 years old when the Beatles took America by storm on The Ed Sullivan Show. 55 years later, his latest studio album, Egypt Station, is his first solo record to debut at number one. An honor not lost on the rock legend. I mean, here you are making music for 60 years. Is it as much fun now? Are you enjoying it as much as you did then? Yeah, it's completely different. How? Cause, well, because I'm a grown-up. Mm -hmm. You know, I think back to when we were kids doing our first sessions. And you were kids. We were kids. I mean, we were early 20s. So we were wide-eyed. So it was that kind of wonder. It was like, wow, recording studio. Now, you know, after 60 years, it's not that. It's a different kind of thrill. Mm -hmm. Writing the music still a thrill, because out of nowhere, you produce a rabbit, you know, and wow. And if you get one you like, it's a great feeling. But it's a completely different vibe from the kids knocking out a record. Is this true that sometimes you have to relearn the older stuff? Yeah, I have to relearn everything. I've written an awful lot. So you can't retain them all. We go into rehearsal and I learn them, you know. Oh yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Dude, so, well, sometimes when you're relearning them, do you kind of look and go, you know, this is pretty good. I do. I really do. You know, that's, that's one of the joys of doing some of the old songs. I say, oh, that's clever. I wouldn't have done that. A lot of people would say, you know, it's time to slow down a little bit. What is it that keeps you doing? Mainly because of the audiences. Is that one of the best parts of this? Yeah. I think just as you, you come on and it's like, wow, they like me. And it's a thrill. It's a big thrill. But come on, you, you, you've got to know people love you. Well, <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, it doesn't get old. Yeah. You know, if people love you, people love you. Yes. And that's, that's a great feeling. At his recent concert in Los Angeles, Beatles fans got an unexpected blast from the past when he was joined on stage by a surprise and very special guest. It's really exciting to think that that still works. Yeah. We thought we had five, ten years maximum. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, we're a little rock and roll group from Liverpool, and that, that was beyond the expectations. But then five years came, ten years came, and we were still rocking, and then it just kind of kept going. It's self-perpetuating. After a lifetime filled with music and memories, he says he's still not ready to take that final bow. More studio music? Hopefully. I've got to think of it first. I'm thinking right now. Are there more adventures of the Grand Duke? People like it, and people want it. Um, damn it. I'm sure I could think of some more. We hope so. Thank you, Al. Thank Great you. to meet you, Al. You too. Thank you Good so man. much. I got to tell you, it, it, and what was wonderful in the through point between him and Ringo is that yeah. 
they are such generous people with their time, with their emotion. Yeah. It was it was really a terrific moment. That was a fascinating. He actually doesn't have to think too hard about new music because you know he famously ad libs when he's in the studio. Yeah. Him and the band will just make up all these songs, and over the years, apparently they've collected thousands of what could be new songs yeah. that he's thinking about putting That's out. That's right. They've, he's written or, been, or co-written at least a thousand songs, yeah. which is kind of incredible. It seems incredible. like it excites him just as much. Yeah, really. And coming up on the third hour, Paul McCartney tells us what. Legendary Beatles song came to him in a dream. Ooh. In a dream. Oh. In a dream. Yeah. Great. By the way, we should also point out that his uh, book, that children's book, Hey Grand Dude, yep. is available in the United States and, of course, in the United Kingdom as well mm -hmm. on September 5th. Looking forward to more of that. that